welcome everybody to this lecture in Applied Foreign Exchange Trading. In this lecture, I would like to talk about the FXCM trading station and I would like to introduce you into uh, this kind of software which can be used to trade foreign exchange. Let's get started. So the foreign exchange market is a kind of over-the-counter market. This implies that there is no market maker between the buy side and the sell side, but the buy side and sell side are dealing directly with each other. Over-the-counter market is also abbreviated as an OTC market. The standard lot size in this uh, demo account is a micro lot. And a micro lot is 1000 units of the base currency for one lot. So in case that we deal with the XXX YYY exchange rate, one lot is equal to 1000 units of the XXX currency. So in case that we trade in the US dollar yen market uh, and we type in one lot, then it is a case that we are trading 1000 US dollar because the US dollar is in the numerator of this fraction. When it comes to the Euro US dollar market and we are trading one lot sites, then we are trading 1000 euros uh, and the same with the Euro British pound or the Euro Japanese yen exchange rate. Then we are always trading 1000 euros. So the upper part like the numerator of this fraction is called the base and the lower part, the denominator is called the counter. So the first currency is a base currency and the second currency is a counter currency. The exchange rate refers to the amount of the counter currency that can be exchanged for one unit of the base currency. So for example, when it comes to the euro US dollar exchange rate, and there is this exchange rate of 116,920. Then it implies that one euro can be exchanged for one dollar and 16 US cents. So we are always talking about one unit of the base currency, so one euro, and then we can exchange one euro in one dollar and sixteen cents. Each currency has a buy price and a selling price. Let's have a look once more. So there is a sell price here and there is a buy price. And when you compare sell and buy, then it is a case that the buy price is always higher than the sell price. So each currency has a buy and a sell price. The buy is also labeled as the ask or the offer price and the sell price is the bid. A is larger than B. So the buy price is always larger than the sell price. The difference between ask and bid or the difference between buy and sell is called the spread. So in this example, the difference between buy and the sell price, this is the spread. What happens if one exchange rate increases or decreases? In case that the exchange rate increases, then the base currency is getting stronger. The base currency appreciates and the counter currency is getting weaker. So the counter currency depreciates. So, for example, in case that in period T the exchange rate is at 116 euros for one US dollar, and in T plus one the exchange rate increases to the level of 120 euros for one US dollar, then this is a depreciation of the US dollar and an appreciation of the euro. So, for one euro, we get more US dollars and therefore appreciation of the US dollar. Let's also introduce these two terms long and short positions. If one trader expects 
the exchange rate to increase, then the trader would press the buy button and would have a long position. If the trader expects the exchange rate to decrease, then the trader has to press the sell button and would have a short position. So once more, the ex uh, example from the euro US dollar exchange rate, if a trader expects an appreciation of the euro, if a trader expects that the exchange rate increases, we have to press the buy button. When we press the buy button and we type in one lot, then we would buy 1000 euros and we would be long in the euro. So there are two different kinds of market orders. One is called like at the market range. It is the default setting. And the advantage of this type of order is that we have price certainty. So when we uh, use this option, then we can be sure that the price is not very much away uh, from the current market setting. When we uh, press the at best button, then the entire order will be executed at the best available rate. The advantage of this type is that we have execution certainty, so we know that our order will be filled immediately. When we type at market range, it might be the case that it will last a few seconds until our order is executed. This is already a very detailed information, and I think that this is not so important. Let's talk about high and low. Uh, you can find this kind of information uh, here in this upper part. There is an L. Uh, this uh, indicates the low price and H indicates the high price. What is that all about? It is the highest or the lowest exchange rate since 5 o'clock in the afternoon New York time. So we get some information about the trading range in which the exchange rate was trading in the recent, most recent past. So high is the highest buy price since 5 o'clock afternoon New York time and low is the lowest sell price since 5 o'clock New York time. The following information is very important. This is what I would say. So I think that entry orders are very important. When we place an entry order, we place an order away from the current market rate and entry orders are not executed directly at the current market rate, but are only executed if the market reaches the rate specified before in our order. There are two different types of entry orders. One is called limit entry orders. It is important to implement a so-called pullback strategy. And then there are stop entry orders, which are important when you want to implement a breakout strategy. Let's talk about limit entry orders first. Limit entry orders are orders to buy below the current market rate or to sell above the current market rate. And they are implemented, uh, they are used to implement a reverting strategy. Uh, limit entry orders are used to implement a so called pullback strategy. Let's have a look. So I would like to use this graph to highlight what a in limit entry order is and when it makes sense to come up and use this limit entry order. Here I would like to give an example where we um, buy below the current market rate. So it is the case that uh, in the most recent past, the exchange rate is oscillating around the level of 100. Sometimes it is going all the way up to 110. Sometimes it is going all the way down to 90. But the exchange rate is trading around the level of 100. Right now we are here. We are at this point in time. And we also believe that in the future 
the exchange rate will stay in this range. So this is a very important detail that we believe that in the future this range will be stable. Therefore, if the exchange rate goes all the way down to 90, then we believe that the exchange rate will go up again. So uh, the idea is that we place an order and we don't know how the exchange rate develops in the future, but uh, we expect that if the exchange rate goes all the way down to 90, then there is only one possibility how the exchange rate will develop in the future. The only way is up. So we place an order at this point in time that, we w uh, that if the market reaches the level of 90, then we want to buy. So we are buying below the current market rate because we believe that there are uh, uh, some forces which will pull back the exchange rate in case that this limit is reached. Let's have a look at uh, the second uh, limit entry order. It is sell above the current market rate. We are in the same situation as before. So we are right now in the situation that the exchange rate is at this level here. And we have observed in the past that the exchange rate is fluctuating in the range of 90 and 110. We believe also that in the future, like these borders are stable, so we can place an order to sell above the market rate. So if the exchange rate goes up all the way to 110, we believe that there are some forces which will pull back the exchange rate to the center. So it is a good idea to sell at 110 and to buy back at 100 or at 90 so that we can profit from this situation. So, um, I have um, explained what a limit entry order is. Either we buy below the current market rate or we sell above the current market rate. Let's switch to the stop entry order. Here, it is also the case that in the past, the exchange rate was trading in this range but, but we believe that in the future one important information will be released so that the exchange rate will break out. So we expect that the exchange rate will break out that either like the upper limit will be uh, crossed or that the lower limit will be crossed. And the idea here is that we buy above the market, the current market rate. So in case that the exchange rate crosses the upper bound, then we expect that the exchange rate will increase even further. So the idea is when the exchange rate reaches this limit here, then we will buy because we expect that the exchange rate will increase even further. The other possibility to place a stop entry order is to sell below the current market rate. The setting is the same. Previously, the exchange rate was trading in this kind of range. We expect that if the exchange rate crosses the lower border, then it will be the case that the exchange rate will decrease even further. So the idea is when the exchange rate crosses the lower border, then we want to sell here because we expect that the exchange rate will decrease even further. So when the lower bound is reached, uh, this is a sell signal. We are selling here because we expect a breakout from the current market range. Let's switch to our slide desk. So we have uh, talked about 
the two different types of orders. We have talked about limit entry order, which is a pullback strategy, and stop entry orders, which are used uh, to implement a breakout strategy. When you have some time, please watch this video because it is related to a stop entry order and it deals with the situation where the Brexit vote was announced. We have two ways to formulate an exam problem. The, the first one is, like a customer believes that the Euro US dollar right now is trading at an average rate of 130 with an upper ceiling of 131 and a lower ceiling of 129. The customer believes that in case that the exchange rate knocks through the upper border of 131, the exchange rate will increase even further. And now your task is, is that you should take a position for this customer. You should type in the right order type in order to match the expectations of this trader. Another way to formulate an exam problem is that currently the exchange rate is trading at 130 euro US dollar. A customer has, has typed in a limit entry order of 129 euro per US dollar. And now you have to check what does this position reveal with respect to the expectations of this trader. So based on one trade, you should infer what does this trader expect. So these are the two ways how we can formulate one exam problem. In the following, I would like to um, talk about, about some details, some more definitions. Um, an OCO, OCO order, OCO stands for one cancels the other. It implies that if one part of the order is executed, the other part will be automatically cancelled. So this OCO order can be used um, when you expect a breakout in the one or the other direction. So before a new information release, the market moves sideways. And uh, we expect that when the news is released, the price could break out to the upside or to the downside. And then we place a simple one cancels the other order. Uh, we we um, type in two orders. One is buy above the range and one is sell below the range. And if one of the two orders is filled, then the other order is cancelled automatically. Stop and limit orders. What is that all about? Stop and limit orders are related to open positions. And these positions should be closed when the market reaches a specified rate. Stop order, it implies that one open position should be automatically closed before in additional losses are incurred. A limit order is used to secure profits, to lock in profits. Limit orders are used to automatically lock in a profit. So perhaps you should men mention and learn the following sentence, like stop losses, limit profits. Let's go into detail. For a buying position, the stop order will always be placed below the current market price and the limit order will always be placed above the current market price. When it comes to a short position, like a selling position, then the stop order will be placed above the current market price and the limit order will always be placed below the current market price. For buying positions, it will be the case that the position will be closed when the sell rate is reached, like the bid rate, the lower price. And for selling positions, the position will be closed when the buy rate is hit 
like the asked rate, the higher price. So the last topic I would like to talk about um, is uh, trading on margin. Like when we trade in our, on our demo account, it is the case that we can trade with a leverage. So we have 50,000 euros available, but we can trade 200 times 50,000 euros. So we have a very, very extreme leverage here. And that's very attractive because of the fact that you can make, you can generate profits in very, very short time periods. But it also implies that losses can be very, very huge in very short time periods. I never want to see a student demo account where there is an open position. And at least you have to type in a limit order to limit your losses. This is very important. Now I've talked uh, a lot about um, the different definitions and also some strategies. What is now very important is that you download uh, the FXCM trading desk and you start trading because then it will make much, much more sense what I was talking about here. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.